Hey guys, and how's it going? One of the local subscribers gave me a shout and said, hey, I got a bunch of equipment that I'm cleaning out of my yard and uh, you might be interested in. And this is one of the pieces. It is a, I don't even know what year it is. You probably go find out. But the backstory on it was, I think somebody gave it to him, had a blown engine on it. He replaced it with a lawnmower engine. You see there, I think it was even a smaller horsepower. You said like a 3.75. And then used it for a while. He had a barn or a garage and the building ended up deteriorating, falling down, and a bunch of the equipment went outside. And I, could, I would guess it's probably a while, judging by the looks of the machine that's been stored outdoors. I've done nothing to it yet. I figured we'll kind of, you know, get into it all together and uh, see what we got. I don't even know, know if the engine turns over. Uh, it looks like we have a wheel off of something else that is Maybe Keruampus. And the other one on that side looks okay. It looks like there might be mice in the engine, judging by the material that is coming out of it. And uh, so we got a, an engine, a hydraulic pump. My guess, I am, look, there's probably a belt underneath running a couple of pulleys. We'll figure that out. My concern is if water got into the hydraulics, that could really kind of put a damper on things. But I guess we'll take out one thing at a time. Let's get you in a stand and we will get into the engine part of it, see if we can save that, and then we'll just move on, see what does and doesn't work, and possibly be able to save it. If not, we'll figure out what happened to it. It's missing it's nut on that one. That one's kind of floating barely on there. Well, let's go see. And any oil in it? It's low, which is good. I think I'd rather have it low than too much, that means water got in it. Let's go take a peek in that gas tank. There's any fuel in it. Let's go grab a light and go and look on the other side. Going in. Doctor's order, it's looking pretty dry. I've had peed all out or somebody emptied it. Let's go give her a little yank on the pull start, see what it does. And what do we get? Uh oh, <laughs> oh. <laughs> we just caught. Starts right up, works fine, right? Eh, it's decent. Let's get the, uh, maybe the top cover off. I'm looking down right in there and I see a bunch of crap sitting in there. It probably is full of mouse nests. We're gonna have to get that cleaned out anyway. We're gonna give her a once over. Uh, let's, um, let's go just check for spark real quick. Let's see if we got any on that. What do we got for a kill switch? Uh, that'll be off. Let's go put, if it'll go. There we go, put that to run. Let's go see if it's got any spark. Wrong size. Looking pretty white. These are all electronic ignition, all this older stuff, so it's either gonna work or it's not as far as the coil. I saw a spark. All right. Get that cover off. Got all of them? Let's go see who's hiding in here. A live one comes jumping out. More layers to go. That was just a, that was a fake. <laughs> Let's get a ratchet and a socket and get this off. And we gotta get this tin off down below. Sometimes there's another one with a, um, a spacer, a long bolt over here on the side. I haven't gotten into there yet, but yeah, it feels like it's there. Should a lot of times you got a spacer behind them. You got to watch it drop it down. It's part of the gas tank too. It's got a built-in shoulder on this one. And we should just have the fuel line to contend with. 
Yeah, let's go grab some pliers to get that off of there. Let's try this left-handed. Yeah, yeah. A little bit of something in there. All right, back to the main goal. Let's go get the pull start fan tin off of there and see what we have for critters. I get the one for the uh, oil. Hopefully you can walk that one. You see, you can't see. It's got like a little locating pin. Lift up on a hair. Actually, this is low on oil anyway, so it may not be an issue. Sometimes you pull these out, it pisses oil everywhere. Let's go, there we go. Rotate. Yeah. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> Somebody's getting evicted. Let's go get a shot back and we'll go clean that crap out of there. Didn't expect that, huh? No, not at all. She's packed pretty down. Pretty far too. So there's a fan on top. That's here's the fan. And what it does is it takes that shroud sucks air in through there and then dissipates the airflow across the cylinder head. Of course, if this stuff is in there, there's no airflow and the motor over revs, not over revs, uh, overcooks itself and burns it up. So let's go get that cleaned out of there and uh, we'll see what we got. Hope we got some compression. Duffy's bad. sat out in the rain. You can tell by how much time he times that cap filled up with water. That's the pull start cap, That's what it catches on. He's just not rotted right out. All right, let's suck what we can and blow what we can. Let's go flip it up on its side like this. We'll get a look at what the drive system is. I'd like to kind of disconnect it while we're working on it. My guess, it may have a nest in there too. Like it's covered, something like a snowblower. Right off the bench, the whole thing falls. We good over there? Good? All right. <laughs> Any fluids pissing out? Oil might piss out the um, air cleaner. Place your bets. Anything in there? The only opening I see is that and that, but mice can get in there too. Oh yeah. A little tensioner pulley in there. Not too bad. Definitely tell it hasn't been uh, run in a day or two. I think the spiders are uh, been evicted. Let me hit the vacuum cleaner on that too, get that cleaned out of there. It looks pretty simple, huh? See if we could despring it. Is that moving? Yeah. Put that off. Damn it. Stuck to the pulley. <laughs> that pump feels. Quiet. And that one we already know turns. Good. You see where the uh, bolt pattern change from changing the engines got some washers crushed on it three of them compared to wherever it was before right, let's go flip it back down I want to get that carb off and soak it I wonder if we if any of this moves up out of the way I see some kind of there you go oh, not very far huh can we push it forward just want better access to this you know hmm Maybe we'll get, get a jack stand or tie this up to the roof. Well, we do something like 
Maybe wedge a piece of wood in there. There we go. A little bit better access. Right, let's get this uh, air cleaner structure off of there and get that carb out. I'm pretty sure that's gonna be cruddy. Just remember the fact with the. Does the throttle even move? It does. But you know, if I don't go in there and clean it, it's gonna need it and take it apart, it'll be fine. These engines have like that square paper air cleaner. I already cracked the screw loose. And um, they are susceptible to the moisture because the water can kind of hit them. Let's see what you got on this. Yeah, you can just tell by the rust. Eh. I believe we got two more screws going through. We'll get this cover off. I'm just going to eyeball the linkages real quick and make sure there's nothing that I'm going to screw up by putting it back in the wrong place. But I think on these, like some, some carburetors have... Uh, different spots you can put rods back on. There'll be like two or three different locations. I do not see that on this. They look like they're all single. And get this big old fat thing in there. What you, what you'll do not to turn a ratchet, right? Strip it right out. fine to you rolled off the edges now you really made work for yourself these two look a little easier to get to what if it been better to take the engine and, and rotate it the other direction now nah, because the exhaust would be blown into the the hoses Check just a breather hose that's just a crankcase hose. In there. And pull the carb or you just think we should take the float ball? Let's just try yanking that float ball off real quick and take a peek inside. Is this that one? Yes, it is. That's your prediction. I'm predicting white powder. <laughs> The White House jokes. Ah, she's locking up. I hate when she does that. Uh oh. <laughs> that is not a good sign. That means there's so much crap in there that the threads are um, corroded. And that's the jet, too, in the center of it. Yeah, look at all that. That was never going to run. Bowl off. It's gonna have to come apart. Actually, not. You know, I don't think it runs very good on that. But all right, we're gonna have to go pull her and soak her. Eh, float stuck. All right. Rest of the way, it's gotta come off. We can go screw with other things while that's doing that. I'm gonna go take a minute and get that off of there, and we'll get it soaking. Actually, I'll be able to stay there. Let's just disconnect one throttle point. Come on. It's coming off the governor. There we go. Good. Let's go take that over to the bench and take a peek at her. <laughs> it looks fine. Yeah, it's looking a little questionable whether this one's going to recover. This one's really. Got some corrosion to it, and that white corrosion is the aluminum of the carburetor itself going away. Let's see if can grab that. Okay, there we go. I need my little, my little hose cheater pliers. Let's get that. Yeah, it's corroded right, right up through the center of it. Let's see if we can get the float off of it, the pin out of it. Oof. <laughs> yeah, this is a good one. I um, tore a mower, I think it's a Honda though. I did tear a mower apart not that long ago that has, um, you know, that we steal parts off of. 
possibly. Maybe another carb. Let me um, get a punch, see if we could drive that pin out of there. But yeah. That's been a day or two since that run, huh? I'm not giving a I think that punch is too big. See if it'll move though. I think it did. I think it's the right size punch. Yeah. I think a good way to support this. Let's try something like that. It's not very strong metal, it's just like a pot metal, you know. Probably get a new car for like 12 bucks. What fun is that? <laughs> that gonna work? There we go. I'm gonna. Yeah, see that? I'm gonna get it out of there. That's the needle and seat, and yeah, that needle is stuck. We can get the float off of it. Might be able to work our way around it. Yeah. Hey, you wanna try and get that out? <laughs> Punch again? I try pulling it, I feel like that plastic's just gonna break, so you gotta try to. I might have punched right through the plastic, I think. Come off of there. Yeah. I bent the tip of the uh, needle. Let's see if we can grab that with some like wire wire cutters. Need some leverage. It's kind of there it is. <laughs> Yeah, that's cruddy. That's one of the uh, the more nasty ones I've seen in a while. I'm gonna go take a quick peek and see what we could dig up for a carb. I don't know about you, but I am not giving that one too much hope. If we don't have anything else, we're gonna try to move forward with this. Yes, we are. <laughs> the bottle works. Choke moves. Because the uh, acid bath, unfortunately, doesn't do much for this uh, this white powder stuff. Let's go see what I can find. Definitely need one of them, huh? Stash shopping. There's a mower over here. I don't think this is even... Uh, same kind of air cleaner. This one's even any good neither. I don't know if I want to chop this thing apart to steal the carb off of it. I wouldn't mind if it was a when it was already ratted. That one's for another day. The land of carburetors. In there. Be guffy see one that looks somewhat familiar. That's a snow block carb. Snow blower. Kind of need the same thing on there anyway because of the, the governor setup. It has to kind of match. Yeah, you can throw another carburetor on there. It'll run, but it won't control the RPMs. It won't maintain the RPMs. I'll look at like slim pickings. Huh? I'm gonna go pick away at this a little bit more and see if I could find anything that we could suit. If not, we are definitely gonna move forward with trying to get this one to 
do something. Yeah, he's a lot of these are motorcycle curbs. Well, nothing to lose but some time, right? It's the challenge. That's what makes it fun to an extent. See if we can get that rubber seal off of there because that's not going to survive the the bath. I Maybe mean, what we'll do is we'll go up to the wire wheel and we'll try and knock off as much of that aluminum crap as we can. I don't believe there's any adjustment on this anywhere. No. Yeah, let's go hit this on a wire wheel, knock off some of the heavy crap. And what else we got to deal with? I don't think the float pole was too bad. And we gotta definitely try to get that needle seat to work. That's the big, gonna be the biggest issue is getting that hole to slide up and down smoothly. <laughs> Powder time. <laughs> and I'll probably give us a 75% chance that we're going to launch this across the room. <laughs> see if we don't kill it. Just give a little bit of pressure on it. I'll get that on the wire wheel. Some, sometimes the needle is does have the seating material. On it. Sometimes it's down in the carburetor. Let's go clean that off, see what we got. Yeah, down on there is where the real issue is. I'm trying to get that. All the corrosion that's on there. Then there's going to be a seal down there. Which I might have. I might have that in a kit. I, just, I was just, just able to poke through it. Got to be careful. You don't want to shoot air this way. You, you will launch it right out of there and never see it again. I'm going to take a little bit of time to take a pick before we soak it. Let's try to knock all this loose crap off of here. We'll see what the uh, the cleaner can do. Also, we got to get those jets down in there. They have to have an open passage also. Let's go grab some car cleaner. Just go some, just make sure we can spray through things. There's some right in front of the bench here. Can you get it? Yep. Let's go try that first. Woohoo! There you got that. Passing through. I think this is the one that does anything. Yeah, there it is. You can, now you can see the color of it's red. Yeah. Hmm. Alright, let's get her soaking and we'll move on to something else. Probably should do the same to this too, huh? This is the uh, main jet coming in. This is what meters how much fuel goes in. Let's go in through those holes and get sucked up through there. I don't think that's happening. I'm going to hit that on the wire wheel. Come back and we'll kind of rinse that. And then we're still going to soak it in the uh, ultrasonic. But we will get all the heavy crap off of that too. That's a little better. And I like a wire wheel. A wire brush bristle. A lot of people keep sending me um, pipe cleaners. But I find for the smaller jets, like that one in there, that it just doesn't go down small enough. And, and this works fine. Plus, generally everybody has one, you know. That hole's completely clogged right there. So, let's go hit that with some spray. See if it'll pass through. Yeah. Alright. How's that bowl look? bit of crap on the top where the seal is but the bowl actually looks fairly decent doesn't it surprise a lot of times what these will do they'll they'll get like a rot spot in them these I should have anyway all right all that's going in the cleaner finally yeah, now you said it five times right I'm gonna take the two by four out of there the whole thing just slid forward 
<laughs> access to the carb. We gotta, um, I wanna get the oil out of there. I think it's gonna have to do a drain from underneath. Let's again, let's go flip it back up on its side and see what we got for a drain plug. Hopefully it's accessible. Looks like half inch, half inch or three eighths. That's half. Nope, three eighths. I grabbed some. Same goes, you grab the other one. It'll be the other one. Follow that one. Damn it. Let's go to like, it's almost ready to fall out. I'll flip it back down and get a pan under it. Yeah, right there. I got a block of wood under the one wheel to kind of just a little bit of room. Where'd it go? You guys got a better view than I do. Nothing come out. Good. Let's see if there's any water in there. Let that run for a minute. Definitely needed some uh, changing. We don't even know if this is a good engine or not. Neither whether it knocks or not. <laughs> Get oil in it. Maybe we can, um, you know, put a little fuel in the plug hole and try giving her a couple of yanks over. See if it'll go. Here's that pin that I took out of there. See if uh, possibly you can bend that top back without breaking it off. <laughs> Let's see how this works for us. I can get on it. Try to make it where you can see. Popping out. Let's go get her. Deeper. Or you just kind of grab it with pliers, you think? Let's try this one more time. Yeah. Sliding out of the vise, but I don't have anything else better to try to. I wonder if we can um, maybe put the bent part in the jaws. You're saying I'm gonna break it right now, aren't you? <laughs> I'm thinking the same. Can you get it? Anything? <laughs> I don't know. Really kind of looking. Try a little more. It's like a drunken sailor now, huh? I'm gonna work on that a little bit more. Let me try wrapping some tape around it and um, working it. Or make a look for another one. Ah, it's gonna break. Might have overdone it. Well, you got so many bends before it's gone. Let me just leave it alone for now. I'm gonna go shopping, see what I can find. How about some wire cutters? I just grab just over and under it. Ah, I knew that was gonna happen. Oh well. <laughs> We need one now. One of these containers may have what we're looking for. I would think it'd be at the very bottom. I'm gonna go grab um, another one of those little white toasts. We'll just dump it right in it. Gonna be behind door number one, two, or three. Generally, like all the, when I get the carb kits, I just throw like miscellaneous pieces back in here. For occasions just like this. What's that one? It's there. I think that's got the rubber on the, that's a different size. Can we go rubber on rubber? <laughs> Stop it. We'll hold on to that one for now. Let's take a peek at another one, see what that's got. Plus the one that was there had that, that longer, it's the wrong size. Uh, 
We have one more. Take a peek in these packs real quick, make sure there's nothing in them. These are all these little, those are like little two-stroke carbs. I'm not gonna have it. Something like that though. Which one was it that we didn't use? <laughs> I don't know, is this one or the other one? Yeah, this, you can look in this one, yeah. This one's got quite a few in there. Is that it? That's the closest. It's got the rubber tip. I don't know if it's gonna screw us up or not. As long as it seals, right? Let's go hold on to that one. I think that might be our only only choice. Right. What is this one? Come on. What's that one? It's got the metal tip on it. Where's the one that we took out? Where's the one that we broke? You broke, I didn't break it. That it? <laughs> yeah, sometimes it's good to be lucky, right? All right. There is our replacement. And we'll throw these back in for the next time. Not that much oil came out of it. Also, a little, a little bit of a metally looking colors to it. A lot of times it settles to the bottom. You'll see it. That's not terrible though. Go dump that out and uh, refill her up. You can get away without a a funnel. <laughs> I don't even get any dirtier, right? Which I think would be a better um, drinking game. Every time I say it's not terrible, what do you think? Or, um. Let's go with about right there. Can I overshoot it? No. Sometimes it gets you because the bottom of the tube stays wet. Up to the, a little bit above the bottom dot. We'll leave it there for now. At least it has something in it. I really think that plug is gonna need a little bit of a cleaning. <laughs> I'll hit that with the wire wheel too. Yeah, sometimes on a plug, you can actually kind of screw it up by hitting it with a wire wheel and getting a little too overzealous. So again, the idea is supposed to uh, have power go through the center of the plug and arc to the grounded side of the engine or the plug and there's an insulator in the middle that's what this piece here is an insulator so you want the arc to jump here sometimes what you're doing you could even see it on this one when you hit it with a wire wheel it'll put like little metal deposits i don't know if it's showing up little metal deposits from the wire wheel kind of coats it and what it does is actually try and foul the plug out and what a plug means by fouled is that this from here to the body has already been grounded out somewhere so it doesn't want to jump across there it could be due to doo doo uh like oil and grease can pack up inside here uh carbon can build up and it want to arc across it so there's a bunch of ways that that can happen sometimes the insulator even breaks down there so they used to do sandblasting on plugs it used to be a common thing in old days and i guess what they found over time with doing the sandblasting is engines were failing shortly after doing a tune-up and sanding the plugs i'm saying like a long time ago too you know 30s and 40s and uh, what was happening was they'd sandblast them clean them out but little bits of sand would stay down in this cavity down in here and then when you run the engine they would break loose and they'd get down by the rings and get stuck down by the ring and then score the crap out of the side of the cylinder so they kind of got away from doing that and just put new plugs in it all right, let's go. I don't know if we could even fire this right now. We'd have to kind of get it all back together. Let's um, let's dribble a little bit of fuel in there. Maybe we just kind of set the pull start. 
on top, give her a couple of yanks and see if it'll cough over. A little squirt bottle, and this is, again, a little bit of two-stroke gas, got some oil mixed in with it, which does help. Because sometimes, if you were to look inside that cylinder, I'm not gonna take it apart, but inside that cylinder will have, um, that white corrosion will grow on that too. So it just gives you a little bit of help with lubrication. Try to break that up without scoring the walls. See if we can go set this thing up. Maybe we'll throw a couple of screws in it. We should be actually be able to maybe even dump a little bit of fuel into that the intake manifold. So we can wiggle that back in there. I'll bring it back. Back, yep, see what she does. Life comes out of her. Not much compression. All right. Sometimes it just needs to run for a second too. The sides of the valves can have like that little bit of corrosion growing on them, like we saw on the carb. She lives. It didn't sound like it was knocking too bad, huh? <laughs> uh, where are we? I don't know if we get into any of. Yeah, how are we gonna purge? This, I'm gonna look and see if I have any hydraulic fluid. I think this is probably gonna be the tank, the reservoir of it. Yeah, the hoses are going there. And I kind of wonder if we have any water that's in there. Where's there should be a breather on it somewhere because as the piston goes, expands and contracts, the volume of the oil also goes up and down and it has to have some place to breathe when it does that. You see it anywhere? There. Should be a hole in it somewhere, maybe. Hmm. I wonder if we can um, crack that loose and kind of get like a urine sample out of it. See what we got. If there's even anything in it. Go check. Let's get the safety switch on it. That one time, that's all disconnected. We don't know what the piston looks like me either. Uh. I think that carb needs a little bit more time to do its thing if we stand a chance on that. Still looking for a breather. It might be back here somewhere. Get the rocks out of it. Uh, I would think that, you know, maybe not because if you were to tilt it, it would piss out, wouldn't it? Hmm. Right, I'm gonna keep. I'm gonna go clean that off. See what it says. <laughs> yeah, because sometimes they run on different things too. Some use hydraulic oil. Some use like motor oil. Some use uh, like a power steering fluid. What do we have? We're operating. We'll plug. So we should be able to pull. It's one and a half gallon tank, and kind of like you're checking the uh, standard transmission. You stick your finger in there and see if you can. Touch it, and plug, tilt the unit. And we go pop that out of there, see what we got. Size would you say that is? 17 maybe? Grab a 17 and we'll tweak it from there. Probably is close enough. Let's see. Well, the piston's all the way in too, so the fluid level should be at its highest. Seeing red, it's kind of like automatic transmission fluid. Yeah, there's automatic transmission fluid in it. It's red. Not hydraulic oil. <sighs> Actually, automatic transmission fluid is a, a form of hydraulic oil. Yeah, it's low and it's red. We're going to keep that in mind. I think maybe we should kind of run it. See what it does. It does say it takes a uh, gallon and a half of hydraulic fluid too. I don't know if I have any here. I think I might have it where the tractors are at the cabin. Let's go look at our lever situations here. It doesn't feel 
don't know if that should stick like that, huh? I wonder if once like, I return it, it pops back off again when it gets there. So right now there's nothing holding it. It pops back. This one automatically returns. I would figure, right, you want to go the direction of it. So that would feed out and then return would be that. And maybe it pops itself back when it hits too much resistance. Let's go take a peek at that carb. See if it got cleaned up at all. Yeah, it's only been 25 minutes or so. we're looking. I say we go for it. Ooh, that's toasty. <laughs> yeah, let's go let that get pissed out. Wash them up and see what we get. So I think our biggest issue is going to be the walls on this bore. So you can get a light better over it. There we go. See how crappy the walls of that are? And generally, they're supposed to be pretty smooth in order for the, what's called the needle, which is that piece that broke, that we found another one of, it has to be able to slide with like no resistance. <laughs> that is supposed to slide in there like butter and not jam up. So there is our problem. I'm thinking maybe we'll try to find, we'll go get like a drill bit index and see if we can kind of find the bit that's the right size and use the flutes of the drill bit that kind of like polish up the sides. That's the only thing I can think of. Any ideas? Anything else besides that before we start? No? All right. Got an index right here. Let's go try. Take out that. It's close. I don't want to run it down and hit the, the seal, you know? See if the next size up will fit. Uh, I think we might tear it up a little. What about running it backwards? I think it's the wrong size. I think we're too big already on that one. We have to find an index that has a more fine knit size. Let's try to run this one backwards. And then we'll take the. See if we're getting close anyway, right? It's probably the right size, actually. Let's go, um, go rinse that out. happen is it'll it'll stick either open or closed and you won't um, either get no fuel or it'll just flood over into the carb and that's got to go all the way down and touch that seal and, and shut just by how much energy the the floats pushing against it which is very little so I'm gonna work that a little bit better if I try getting that seal out of there I'm gonna tear it up so that's why I'm not taking that out of there I wonder if we can um, how do you polish your hole without taking out the rubber. All right, so I'm going to work on that a little bit, see what we get. And one way or another, we're going to put it together and try it. I picked and cleaned as much as I could. A lot of, see like all that white corrosion on around the body. The problem with that stuff is, if it does break off in the future, there's a very small window that can draw fuel up, you know, the, the jet, so to speak. And it can get clogged where a little bit of a piece of that breaks off, that's it. It's not going anywhere. Let's go find this little hammer. Try testing it. Look down here. There you go. I support it on the bench. We tap the pin in. And 
sitting a little proud. Generally, you kind of want the float to be more of like an angle like that. Let's go see if we can. Uh, Cause that's how much movement it has. Don't really have much adjustment on that though. So I'm gonna go and blow in through here and that should be a closed circuit. And then if you flip it over, the needle should open up and I should be able to blow in that's, it is working. Okay, so that's gonna be the fuel on and off. And let's go just check the height. Generally, this is this bowl will be about, you know, right the height of that. So there's not much room between on and off. And that's how much fuel is going to be in the float bowl. So it's probably going to be probably about halfway up. Ideally, you kind of want the fuel level. Again, all this is upside down, but you know, the fuel level would normally be right about here. And a lot of times, like if you have a brass bowl or something, you can take um, a brass um, float rather. You can take the tab that's on there. You can kind of bend the tab a little bit and, and favor it one way or another. This also has a little bit of a well that it drops down. So it may be actually open a little bit more than that. So we are going to go and take those pieces, put everything back together, put it back on the machine. We got to look at that gas tank. We probably could have done that while this was soaking, huh? Let's go throw that back on there. A simple carb is really nothing to them. No air fuel mix, nothing. Now that, and then we clean that main jet. Then that, that's all cleared out. And we get the right down. Hey, again, once I put it all together with the the float ball on, too, I'm going to blow through it one more time, just kind of make sure that it is turning on and off, that the float's not running into something on the ball. So again, it's upside down. So it's closing the float. I can't blow through it, flip it over. I can blow through it, so it will take fuel in and hopefully shut off. <laughs> all right, let's get all that back together, see what we get. I was screwing around with the carb, get that back on there. And this is the governor. Inside the engine, there's a little set of flyweights that move back and forth, but it's very chalky. And I think it's probably right, right there. So let's do it with some coil. See so if we can get that to not be so bindy because it's going to rev. There it goes. But at first, it wouldn't even move at all. And just a bunch of crud on the block. There it goes. Now it's springing back on its own. It wasn't doing that. And let's go look at that, um, that gas tank. I think it's probably the next thing we need to address. Not that. Do it silky soak. Did have some... Uh, Let's go get like a little something to go catch what's coming out and see if it's water or not. Let's see if we get anything out of it. A couple of drips came out when we took it off, so there it goes. Anyway. Looks like water to me. So if that's the case, yeah. I may, um, you could probably put a little bit of gas in it. And we'll let it like rinse out what's in there. Let's go see what we got. Yeah, it's definitely water. It's not, not fuel. Fuel doesn't do that puddling like that. It's much more, it's the opposite of viscous. Much more fluid. And it's definitely, that's water. Taste it. <laughs> Doesn't smell like gas. You think no funnel? Just dump some in there. What we'll do is we'll shake it around. Oh yeah, you're real good at this. I never make a waitress. Good enough, you don't have to go crazy. <laughs> yeah, wash the bench too, right? Put that on, I got a plug on the other end where it comes out. And we'll just kind of shake that around. Make sure we don't make leaks. We'll wipe that up, clean that up. We'll dump it back in that little white pail. We'll see if we get any water in it. I'm trying to look for cracks. Sometimes um, on these tanks, they're like plastic welded together right here. And they, they do have a tendency to uh, split. I don't think anything major. Yeah, let's go dump that out. Actually, the top I think has a shoulder on it, so you can't um, 
dump it out through the top. Get our urine sample. And we'll check for water. The water just kind of like makes like a little puddle in the bottom of it, you'll see. So hopefully this fuel kind of absorbed it. And washed it. <laughs> What should I put in there? <laughs> Alright, I'll bring you back when that's done. That's what we get. It'll float to the yeah, a little bit. I don't know if it's showing up in there. Whoops. So get to stop moving. So right that puddle right down in there is water not much I, I probably could have got away with it here i'm gonna put a little bit of water in it to show you what it will look like actually you can kind of see the the blob is spreading down there and what that does it goes to the very lowest point here we'll put a little bit of water in and we'll be able to see it in the fuel on small engine equipment the orifice for the there you go you see I should use dirty water, it would have showed up better. But on the bottom there. On small engine stuff, that jet is so tiny and the, the water is so much thicker than the fuel that it, it just can't draw it up. One trick you can kind of do, like if you do have a little bit of water in a carb, which you can do when it's running, and kind of like if you can get it running at full throttle, take your hand and cup it right over the intake of the carburetor and it, it draws the vacuum way up up the chamber of it and sometimes you could suck the water up through it you do that a couple times you know it'll die and just before it dies you kind of like let your hand back open let the engine rev back up as fast as you can get it to rev do it again you could draw it up a couple times you know like cars and stuff the jets are much bigger it can suck that up on its own but on small engine stuff like this you'll get that you know picture that miniature on the bottom of the float bowl you can see that puddle going around well, that jet is picking right up from the center there. Let me go find a pick. So here's your main jet. It's going to be picking fuel up from right here. So the machine will be running. It'll be running fine. All of a sudden, it draws to the center. It starts to try to suck up on that little puddle of water there. And it uh, can't run. It'll die. It'll come back. And it'll die. It'll start back up again. You'll be driving yourself nuts. What's happening is it's drawing that puddle into the center. And get it there. It draws it into the center like that. And then as soon as you stop running, the vacuum trying to lift up from the center here, you know, trying to suck that up, goes away. The puddle flows, the water puddle flows back to the side. You start it right back up again. As soon as you start to move the machine a little bit, it moves a little bit and draws that little puddle of water up again. That's why a lot of them have the, um, you'll see a float ball and it'll have like a little drain or sometimes it's like a little tickler, a little spring-loaded um, valve underneath there and that's the same thing they try to get rid of that that's what they're there for or just cup your hand over <laughs> full res let it go a couple times and sometimes you can get it to clear out here you go give ourselves a little bit of a visual so this is one of those float balls with that valve that i was just talking about in it so what you can do is you can go push that down it'll it'll piss down around that kind of opens up a little chamber allows that little bit of water like this one it, they have it raised up so the water has to kind of fight a little bit to get up into there but especially on snow blowers because they you know they they are dealing in wet conditions all the time and they don't run an air cleaner so that and our new fuel causes this causes water to uh absorbs water especially if it has a um, a gas cap that does not seal completely which most stuff that has carburetor does not have that i'd say we give that pull start a little bit of a fighting chance huh? let's go I'm not going to take it apart unless we have to, but there's a set of cogs, see how they kick out like that? That one looks like it's sitting on a funky angle. That one looks pretty good. Sometimes they'll break off. I you remember, we were taking it apart, I was talking about the one bolt that's hidden underneath. It's that one, and then that also has a spacer inside so you got to get all those pieces up under there which is sometimes gonna be a little bit of a a, a fondling of sorts and, yep that's what i was afraid of let's try giving that a couple taps see if we get that float to stop doing that that looked like it tightened that very much did it that seemed like it moved fairly easy yeah. <laughs> i'm gonna crank down on that i never tightened a nut idiot <laughs> That's why it's leaking. 
Definitely too much talking and not enough focusing. So I guess we're getting cocky putting all the gas in there, right? Let's try that. Who'd have thunk? I'm gonna go dry that up and we'll give her a shot. Let's give her a yank. We're about half throttle. I'm trying to remember which way choke. Does it say? That way or that way? Should be able to. I think that's closed. bit of hunting but it doesn't have the air cleaner on it. If I go down all the way there's a wire that shorts out and cuts it off. Let's go rev it up. Well we'd have a there we go. There's a little grounding tab right there. See, see like that little white block right there? Now I'll push it back off of it. Hold on. Hey, you can see that little tab. Too much light. That little tab that's in there. That's what grounds out. And we get set up. Yeah, right. Uh, right there. See, it kind of comes around. It, it touches that tab. Right there, that's, how it, that's what it shuts it down. That's the kill wire. It just grounds out the coil. And shuts it down so that's idle that's off good let's um flip it back on its side we'll get the belt back on it kind of clean up the pulleys a little bit and we'll start running the hydraulic pump see what we get i flipped you the other way to keep the uh, gas and oil in it let's um take a wire wheel let's go clean these pulleys up a little bit get some of the crap that's on them so it doesn't eat up what's left of the belt and we'll fire it up and see if we have any hydraulic pressure Go with that. Now, that's definitely stuck in one position for a while. <laughs> Hopefully, when it goes and bends, it doesn't crack. Let's go give ourselves a little uh, test around there. I'll see it cracks in it. Hopefully, the flexibility of it comes back. If not, it looks like it's pretty easy to change a belt. Let's get that idler pulley. Get that one. And put the idler on the right side. Get on there. Come on. I'm almost there. Mouse trap. Go. Right. There we go. Did we get it? There we go. Alright, let's go set her back down. Fire it up. See if she moves. So my guess is that piston is supposed to be locked into there because you know the way the stroke is. Let's um we get the So that's got like a how would that lock itself? And so this, how do we get that in there? How does that allow, oh, we can just lift up on it, right? There we go. Yeah, we'll put you back in the stand. That. I think it's cradled pretty good. Let's go give it uh, that fire up. See if she cycles. Iron hole. Let's try no chokes. You could go without it. Forgot which way it was which already. <laughs> no choke is that way.
say it's the fastest, but it may be having some issues. Let's go get some lube for the uh, main. It's kind of like binding on, on this. Plus, this looks like it's got a couple of dents from logs and stuff hitting on it. That's the only guide that it has. Let's um, yeah, spray some lube on that and see if we can give it a little bit of a helping hand. Maybe we'll see if uh, enough travel. We'll shove a two by four like that across it, and we'll give it some resistance to see if it'll bog down for us. This is like a spray chain lube. To kind of like stay where it's supposed to. Want to pressure wash it? Because sometimes I don't like to um, do that right away. Because sometimes like marks and where oil leaks out and all that, it kind of gives you a heads up whether it's an issue. A few people say, well, why don't you clean it before you even start? Because I, I want it for its, um, let's throw some on the piston, it's not going to hurt it. Um, just like for telltale marks. Right, let's we'll fire it back up again, cycle over a couple of times, and see what it does. Are you good where you are? Yeah. I should have more balls than that. The other thing I'm thinking of too is even putting that automatic transmission fluid in. It's a thinner fluid, so it may not have as much push as it should. And I'm just guessing on that part of it. So, this did look pretty good though, huh? When we came out, that the cylinder's nice and clean. Doesn't have uh, a bunch of like rust and, you know, skate. <laughs> Doesn't have scabies. <laughs> it's like the bolt got some bow to it until it hit the front. That looks like it's meant to stay there to keep the log from sliding off. Let's, um, we're going to have to do something with the fluid on the cylinder. I don't think we're leaking. That's just what I sprayed down on the cylinder running off on that. Uh, you think the best way to kind of, if we have a return here, anything, you can tell the difference between like high pressure and low pressure. High pressure will always have these fittings on it. All these hoses are high pressure hoses. This one is too, and then the low pressure hose will just be like hose clamps and uh, you know, thinner hose, just like this. So this one's low pressure, and this one's low pressure. This is the feed into the pump from the, from the tank, and this is high pressure out going to the hydraulics, to the valve. The valve just has a flow going all the time, and then when you hit the valve forward or back, it diverts it to either this hose or this hose to draw it forward or back. Uh, let, maybe we'll take this off and we could probably tilt it up on end and, and have it go, like go into a pail. But again, like, I don't know what I have for hydraulic fluid. I'm gonna go take a quick peek, see if I have anything here. Well, that took all about 30 seconds. Hydraulic trans and transmission fluid. Hydraulic tractor, hydraulic fluid. We're gonna go with that. So let's get that little hose off there. We'll try draining out what's in it. It kind of needs to be purged anyway, and we'll see how it does. Getting the end of the hoses there, kind of looking a little punky too on the high pressure side. Um, 
Another thing, similar like hydroxy, motor oil, everything. The, uh, although it may function, you gotta watch that there's enough of a reservoir that, because the reservoir, the, the oil that is left over or cycled through actually has a, a little bit of chance to cool before it goes back. So sometimes you say like, well, why does it have such a large reservoir? It doesn't use it all. It's just for that reason. Let's see if there's anything out. Yeah, that's looking kind of. Uh... So maybe we'll take the cap off the other end, and that'll allow it to flow out. Actually, it kind of looks like it has a little bit of water in it too, huh? Has a little bit of like a instead of being red, it's kind of a little bit of a white to it. All right, let me get that front plug out. See if we can get it tilted and make a mess. Anything? Supposed to be coming out of the other hose. <laughs> Get a jack stand under it. There we go. Let's put that down, bench. I'm gonna work that so I get all of it out of it, or what we can out of it. Yeah, that's really thin. You got to figure it's a pump that um, it needs a little bit of go for the viscosity word again to do its thing. Wait for me to drop this whole thing on the floor, aren't you? <laughs> I'm gonna let that run a little bit. We'll get that purged out. Um, I wonder, we kind of should have ran the piston back all the way before we did it. It would have got some of the fluid out of there. Maybe we can um, fire it back up and, yeah, I'm gonna try firing it back. Put the hose it back and I'll fire it up so you can return the piston. You don't get it all, but what, what it does is it has, um, there's still fluid on both sides of the piston, but the direction that you push the piston when it's collapsed has probably half the volume. Come on. I'm going to punch myself in the face with it. Let's go. I know it. Come on. You can do it. Yeah, so it's gonna, you're never gonna get it all out. You probably think the lines out, blow them out with compressed air or something, but we're gonna do our best just to try to get what's in that tank out of there. Probably wouldn't hurt if we put some in and you know, maybe recycle it and do it one more time, but I'm just concerned about the, whether the hydraulic pump is any good. The cylinder seems like it's okay. Uh, the cylinder could still have a problem that is causing it to do this. The cylinder could have, I'm gonna call it blow by. So inside the cylinder, let me grab a rag, hold on. Inside that cylinder, if you have x-ray vision, there is a, so there's a, a rod and or a piston. And in here, it gets fatter. It gets to the diameter of the inside of the cylinder, probably about that wide. And it's got, wide, it's got seals on both sides, wipers on both sides. Um, and that, if that fails internally, those seals start going, it won't leak out the front necessarily, but it can leak past itself where it doesn't have any pressure because it's just, it's just leaking internally through itself and it just doesn't have any balls neither. So I'm kind of thinking it's the, the thinness of that fluid, but we'll see. All right, so I'm gonna probably put that on the floor, try to stand that thing almost straight up and get everything I can out of it. And we'll put the other oil in it, try it again. I don't know if I have a log or anything here that we can kind of put a little bit more pressure on it. Maybe it's like a six by six or something. I can go find, shove a pallet in it. <laughs> I got pallets. Bleed on my friend, bleed on. So let's finish with bleeding now. Let's go look at those bolts. I know it's like that one's catching by like a, a thread, thread and a half. That one's got no nut on it at all. Let's go see if we can find some a little bit longer bolts and see if we can get some uh, better hardware on there. Yeah, you know, screwed up anywhere else. Uh, I think just those two. Let's go see what we can go find. We call that four and a half. It's got a sleeve on the inside so it's kind of hanging up on it. Now we know why it didn't fall out without the nut. Let's 
go see if we can find a longer one of them. That fits in there. Let's do some hardware shopping, shall we? I don't recall anything being that long in here. So we have to go for like the, the little bins. That's yeah, decent size. I'm gonna get a tape measure, measure that. All right, what was your guess? Five inches, we need five and a half. <laughs> Story of my life. And a friend of mine works at a hardware store, works at a hardware store, and they changed out their stash of bolts and he hooked me up with this. Yeah, right, I know. I don't know if there's gonna be ones that are this long in there, but let's go see if we could find anything comparable. Again, five and a half is getting kind of on a long bit of size. I'm gonna go search and I'll bring you back. That's that's right, the problem is it's that three eighths bolt that we need, but they're all gonna be, I think the max is gonna be about four inches long. That's not gonna do it for us. I haven't given up yet, but. Looking for another 3 ace box. Those are self tappers. Oh, well, there you go. <laughs> Let's go see what it says. Which one's five and a half? Five, four, five, six. Let's go lay this one down next to it. So two of those. Do a force, and then we're gonna to want to try to find some. Uh, I don't know if there's any jam. Nut. Here we go. I don't know if they're jam nuts though. Are they? No, they're regular. You can always double nut it to keep it from backing off. I don't think there's that many. Um, I think it's mostly just bolts. But hey, got what we need, right? What thread is that? Fine thread. That's not gonna work for us. The other drum I have though, so we'll go take a peek and see if we can find. Actually, the one that came out of there, maybe that one nut is the right one. That was a jam nut. So like I said, we'll double nut one of these. We'll just like locking them together so it doesn't move. And then the one that was on the original bolt is a jam nut. And that one will take care of the other one. So we'll go put that together while we're still pitching fluid out. Get ready to fill it. I found a vent hole right there. Right in the middle of the axe head. That's how the water got in, probably, sitting outside. Well, this should be a little thicker than the other stuff. Let's see what we get. Uh, better. Think that funnel's going to wipe out on me? I got vice grips holding it. Yeah, we're living on the edge there, huh? <laughs> we got to clamp that a little bit better. I know I'm going to be eating that one. I'll bring you back when it's full. I dumped out maybe a gallon in there. I think I said a gallon and a half. We're just gonna go function it and see how it does. Again, I think he said it had a, like a three or 3.75 horsepower on it and we got a six. But I would think that when we're getting a load on it, we should hear this kind of bog down a little bit more than what it did and it really wasn't. Um, again, if the fluid was so thin, it'd be passing right through the pump and not building as much pressure as we thought. It, I can't expect too much out of it. This is a very small machine. Uh, I found this. It's a wheel chalk for me. It's like a three by six or something. A hardwood, but what we'll do is we'll run it against the grain so it doesn't kind of crack it. I want to hear how the engine um, bogs down, you know, how much pressure we're trying to get out of it. So let's get this assembly out of the way. We'll let it sit for another minute and then uh, we'll fire back up. We'll put some pressure on it and we'll listen. But we may have to cycle a couple times, get some of the air out of it. It's definitely full. <laughs> um, there is some that, you know, residual that stays in the cylinder and the pump and the lines and all too. So, again, I just kind of guesstimated that I put a gallon in, maybe a little more. But it's right to the full level. I let it piss out till it was um, level with the top of that. Let's cycle it a couple times. No choke? We'll go.
turn handle shuts off by itself. Let's go put a piece of wood in it sideways. That's against the grain, you know, so that's the hardest way to try to split wood. I should do it better than I expected. Huh. Well, there you go. <laughs> she lives. I'm going to go clean her up. I don't know if I'm going to give her a bath with the pressure washer. And possibly I'm going to look and see if we have a set of wheels for it. Because that one's, you know, I don't even think they're the same size. That one's laying gangster. And that one looks pretty straight. That's probably the original one there. I'm going to go look on see if I have any crappy lawnmowers we can go steal some wheels off of. Oh, but a set of Honda wheels. Are they the same size front and rear? Yeah, let me try steel. Well, the back one's going to be uh, drive, I think. So the front one's... Yeah, they're kind of crappy too, huh? Swap is in them. Keep looking. Well, let's go dig that mower deck out. There's no motor on that one. I think we that was a, a tear down. We found out the motor was blew up. I guess that old snapper setup. Looks like it's got metal wheels on the back. They're fairly good height on them too. Let's dig that out and uh, see if they're any good. I just fall out of there. It's like it's keyed, huh? Gonna use for that's because it's a driven system. I don't know if we can get a um, something to spin on. Let's go get the wheel off the uh, machine. See what that looks like. Nothing wrong with that one, huh? Yeah, the spin was the spins in the wheel. I think it's gonna fit what we got. It's, um, I wonder if we could take that whole. We could take the whole axle out of it. That'd be more of a pain in the ass than what it's worth. What do you think? Could we get that? Well, it doesn't get any fatter than that, you know. We'll get a tape measure. Ah, it's got a gearbox. Never mind. It's uh, got a differential in it. It's not gonna work for us. So it looks like Honda wheels for the win. I just ran a bolt through it and not on the other side to adjust the play. Not the one that was in it. I'll tighten that up. As long as it doesn't hit, I think we'll be okay. Snug that down. Oh, that's sucky you not. You get the idea. I'll bring you back. Wheel of Musty. So on this side, he had it way far forward and kind of lifted up. It goes on an angle because the other wheel on the other side is bolted there. But the muffler is probably in the way when you put this different engine on. So I went back as far as I can to kind of go clear and match that and drill the new hole. Wheel number two. Thank you, Honda. Yeah, the old ones weren't even the same size. <laughs> yeah. 
little bit better presentation, I'd say. All right, I'm gonna go give it a bath. Actually got a little bath, looks better. Got the uh, belly plate back on it too, clean that up also. We'll double check our oil level. I think we're probably gonna be a hair low. Yeah, we're on the bottom dot. Let's just go top that off. I'd go see if I can find a couple of pieces of wood. And uh, just kind of give it one last cycle. But pretty happy with the way it came out. On the money, on the top. Yeah, let's see if I can find some wood. How about a big old piece of hardwood? All right, let's go give this thing a cold start. It's the next morning. Let's see how she starts. Give her some bottle. Give her some choke. get a bigger piece. Guys, well, that worked out pretty good. It's like uh, got a little bit more snot than I thought I was going to have. I thought it was going to be a little bit on the wimpy side, but uh, apparently not. I got a full-size machine. It seems like it has just as much snot to it. 
I, I'd say maybe the travel speed on this is just a little bit slower. But other than that, it seems like, it, you know, for its size, it's quite a decent u unit. What we have in it, we've got a couple of bolts, um, the needle for the carb. I'm surprised that came back. We still not leaking. Yeah, we're not even leaking anything out. Uh, fluids, the wheels off the Honda mower. And I think that's really about it. So, I'm glad for that. Glad we are able to save this one and uh, it'll live on. I don't know, what's this worth? 200 bucks? Something like that? <laughs> Especially oil prices get higher. All right, guys, with that, I'm kind of rambling. I want to thank you all for hanging out, uh, saving old junk, and uh, hopefully we'll do it again sometime soon. Till then, I'll see you later.